Welcome to another episode of Out of the Woodwork podcast, brought to you by Axminster Tools with me, Sean Evely. In this episode of Out of the Woodwork, I talk to artist, maker, and YouTuber, Nick Zametti. Nick's channel has more than 800,000 subscribers and attracts millions of views from his wacky wood turning and resin art. Nick loves to create stuff from nothing, but most of all, he loves to entertain and inspire, encouraging anyone and everyone to get making. Okay, thank you for joining me, Nick. How are you? Yeah, good. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, how are you? All right, all good? I'm fantastic. You, like me, uh, do a bit of YouTube. You do a bit more YouTube than me, but you also <laughs> are a man of many talents and do a lot more. So, and a lot of people, I think, don't know your past as well. So, mm. I'm really interested in uh, learning about your past and how you got to where you are now. So, I think sure. a, uh, a good question to start off with is um, how it all started or were, were you always creative or what were you doing uh, around school? <laughs> you might not want to get into that. Um, <laughs> I didn't, didn't actually do a lot of school, unfortunately. I was a bit of a naughty boy um, back then. Uh, so um, sort of came out of school and went into um, building trade, uh, jumped into that, sort of digging holes and helping build swimming pools and things and extensions and stuff like that. You know, a bit of a hot carrier type of person, really. Um, I suppose, uh, you know, anyone that age really doesn't really know what they're going to be doing or, or what they're going to be good at at that point, um, whether you've got qualifications or not, really. I think it's just it just what comes to you, isn't it? Um, I did a bit of warehouse work like everyone does, you know, packing boxes and bits and pieces. Yeah. Uh, I think I did work, worked in a fish farm, um, doing okay. fish. It sounds stuff, quite practical. Fish. Yeah, I did all sorts of different things. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I got mucked into all, all sorts of different things. And then <clears throat> and it was just one day, I was just sort of kind of a bit bit sort of, I don't know, a bit bored of sort of getting dirty all the time, you know, and digging holes and, and coming back home filthy and stuff like that. So I just thought I'd turn to an office job, um, which I'd never done before. Um, so I suited and booted up in a, a green suit. <laughs> uh, I might add it was green. It, it, well, I've no idea why or, or how I turned up for an interview in this green suit uh, for a telecoms firm, uh, booking appointments on the phone, and um, they sort of they loved me, gave me the job, and, and said, "Yeah, you know, we'll give you give you a go." And, and and I sort of got into doing sort of telecoms. That was back in ninety. Well, I'm showing my age now. Uh, <laughs> back in about ninety five, something like that. Ninety five, nice, yeah, ninety five, ninety six um sort of booking appointments I, I was pretty good at it actually you know i was sort of had a bit of a natural kind of gift of the gap of you know phoning people up and trying to convince them for an appointment for my sort of sales sales guys to go in and and sort of talk to them about communications and stuff so um did really well there and then a couple of the lads sort of come up to me one day and said look nick you know we're we're sort of thinking about breaking away from this company and sort of setting up our own business and we want you to come with us you know, we think you're really great. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, I was only like a little young, young sprout. <laughs> you know, it's like 800 pound a month or something like that. And I was like, yeah, okay, you know, let's do it. You know, so they, they took me with them. It was like five of us. And um, we set up this company um, called Forcom um, in, in Salisbury. And uh, I had to drive to Salisbury, which I didn't really like the idea of because I was in Eastleigh at the time. I was thinking, oh, I live in Eastleigh, you know, I drive to Salisbury every day. But I thought, well, I'll give it a go anyway. Um, ten years later, I was uh, I was there still as a director. Um, they were kind enough to give me some shares in the business, and um, built the company up from from five people to two hundred and fifty staff. Um, wow. And um, yeah, sort of worked my way through departments and did sort of sales, marketing, and, uh, sales director, directors, and stuff like that, and marketing director, and all sorts of different things I did with that company. So. 10 years in, in telecoms and that sort of changed me a little bit. I got really good at sales, uh, really good at talking to people, really good at um, sort of doing presentations and things to people and things like that. So, um, and, and it just, just came naturally to me. I never really had any qualifications in that side of things. I just really did well. So same sort of thing happened. A couple of directors sort of popped up to me and said, look, Nick, you know, do you want to shit off and do this on your own? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, all right. And so, so I went off again and, and started up my own telecoms firm in um, in 2008 with another director, and um, and we built that up from from the two of us to about 80 staff. <clears throat> um, that went pretty well, really. Um, so I've kind of just been doing telecoms really for, for forever, and 
and then I sort of I got a bit sort of stressed. You know, running your own business is, is quite a stressful thing to do, um, and um, I, I needed something to sort of de-stress myself. Yeah, you'll have to stop me. You know, doing you do know that I waffle quite a lot, right? <laughs> well, you've got two hours. Of you. <laughs> you, you might need five. Uh, so that's perfect for a podcast. I, yeah, I'm, okay, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying good, it. Good. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, so so. Um, it was quite stressful, you know, and, and I suffered quite a lot from anxiety, still do actually, um, and, and depression as well, um, which I also still do. I don't, again, talk about it too much. I, I hide and mask all that from, from all of you. Um, you don't need, need to really know, I suppose. Um, and um, so I needed something to sort of take me away from it. And I used to be a gamer, and that used to take me away from those types of things, you know, when you sit at home, go and do play my game because playing a bit of Call of Duty and stuff, you're in that little zone and, you know, nothing yeah. else is worrying you. So, blah, 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 blah. And I thought to myself, I need something, I'd like to try something else. And I, I always used to watch a bit of YouTube as time went on. I don't think YouTube was really much about when I was doing telecoms, but it sort of came a bit more about and I was watching other people create things, make things. <clears throat> and I was never really a, a maker or a creator. Really. I'd never really made anything, but I was always hands-on sort of person. I always liked to be doing something. I can't. I can't sit around <clears throat> and do nothing, you know, um, either in the garden doing something or, you know, uh, but I never really made anything. And um, I just thought I'll go and buy a lathe. <laughs> so I just went out there and just bought a lathe one day and then came back home and the missus said, well, what, what have you done? What's that? I said, it's a lathe. She's like, what, what, how are you going to find the time to do that? You haven't got the fine time to do anything as it is. I was like, no, I know, but... You know, I thought it might be quite good, you know, and I, and I, I want to sort of maybe try and wood turn some few few bits and pieces. And she was like, I don't you know, she was like, you're mad. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> literally, I don't have any time, you know, working for, you know, running a business and it's, it's a full time, like 24 seven, like seven days a week, uh, for those of you that know, um, because it's your baby, you know, and you want to keep making sure that everything's right. So you're always there and you've got the staff to deal with and stuff and, you know, and they're a pain in the bum um so <laughs> and that was you know it's quite stressful so so I started wood turning anyway and and I thought well other people are you are youtubing it so I thought I'd do it um and don't go back and look at any of my old videos because they're oh they're horrific you know I'm sort of like I think the first one I did was a bowl or a little pot I think for for my mum and um I was like I'm, I'm making this this pot for, for my mum and this <laughs> This is the piece of wood that I'm going to use. <laughs> and it was just... I, I think everyone's first video is a bit like that. Yeah. But it's good yeah, yeah. It's good you yeah. still have them there because I have my first video set and it's it's good people mm -hmm. can see the evolution. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. I mean, because I, I was very shy, which is weird because I was, I was a salesperson, quite a successful salesperson, you know, and I was talk, I've been out talking to, you know, massive management directors of like, you know, 100 200 300 extension kind of like companies 300 staff you know and i was presentation to them and, and I, obviously having my own staff i always have to do conferences with them so i was i would always be up on stage talking to them about you know how to be better and how to be the best you can be and things like that and inspiration and positive and you know and that was me but when i was on camera it was a little bit different so i was kind of really shy which is weird you know because i should have just gone straight on and go right guys this is what i'm going to be doing and which is what i'm like now because that's kind of like that's more me although a little bit kind of like um what would you say um alter ego -y, um i sort of expanded a little bit on my personality in in the channel yeah. these days but so i just started doing that and then the followers just started to come really and i've no idea how or why i don't know really i, I suppose they just like the rubbish that I make. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, and, uh, but I just, I really enjoyed it, you know, and it was great. Right. And rather than coming out, you know, of, of the of the front room or, or, or the office with a, like a high score on, on Call of Duty, you know, I'd actually come out and go, look what I made. You know what I mean? It's so much more kind of, you just feel so much, I don't know. It's, 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 it's more rewarding, feeling, isn't it? it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. More, more rewarding. And, you know, and I sort of showed it to, to me, mum and my dad and, you know, and the family and the kids, and, and they all loved it. And they were like, wow, that's amazing. So just started knocking out little pots, little bowls. Obviously, it, when you're first doing stuff like that, you make one for your mum and one for your dad and one for your brother and another one for your mum and something else for your mum. And, you know, and then I was just making all these things. But everyone just seemed to sort of kind of like it. So so I just started to build up the YouTube side of things, but it was a sideline from running the business sort of thing, really. So um, 
and it was sort of helping me, you know, um, in my day to sort of combat my kind of like anxieties and things like that and, and, and depressions. I think there's, it's not uncommon for, um, you know, uh, business owners to, to, to get into that state of mind. And those business owners listening will probably relate to that. You know, it's, it's um, you know, things were going great. You know, we always had our stumbling blocks and things like that to deal with. But it's just a tough thing to, to try to, to build, really. But we built something quite great. Um, and I sort of um, uh, carried on YouTube and that started growing. Um, and then it sort of just I sort of come to a, a, des- a decision to kind of leave the telecoms industry. So I sort of bailed out um, not long ago, actually, about sort of three or four years ago, bailed out from the telecoms industry. So I've been in it a long, long time and um, and started to sort of concentrate more on YouTube and Maker Central and things. Because I also started Maker Central, obviously, within what I was doing that um because again I'm always doing stuff I'm always I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a person that just doesn't stop I have to keep doing things and keep adding things to my list even though people say Nick you know what you need to do is probably try and calm down a bit that might be sort of why you're stressed <laughs> but then I'll start opening up other businesses you know whilst I'm running another business and I'm like you know everyone's like Nick you're stressed out enough as it is doing this one you know, you don't want to open up another one. I'm like, yeah, be fine. Make a central. I've got a great idea. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's just, I've always got this great idea. I'm a bit like Michael Caine. You know, um, <laughs> got, got a great idea, lads. Um, you've probably not seen the film. Probably too up, too too young, Sean. Um, but um, it's just, I just, I just keep doing stuff, and, and I kind of had to make a decision sooner or later to sort of like get out of of one of them. So I mean, the, the Maker Central thing was just—it's just like it was just a fun thing for me to do. Really, it wasn't really put on as a business. It wasn't really put on as a to make money or anything like that. It was just put on for the community because I wanted—I love the community. It was really great. I went to a few woodworking shows. Went to Atlanta for the woodworking show there. That was great. Met loads of great people like Jimmy DeResta and and Heath Knuckles and you know Carl Jacobson and you know loads of people there. You know, and, and all the people that I've been sort of inspired by. You know, and it was so great to meet those people. And I was like, wow, wow. You know, I stood there like a little boy, like, Jimmy, Jimmy. You know, <laughs> You're in the queue, were you? I'm in the queue, <laughs> yeah. Come on, Jimmy, Jimmy Duresta. Like, can I have a picture? Yeah. You know what I mean? I saw Bobby Duke there. And it was so funny because when I saw Bobby there, he was like, hey. and I was like, hello. He goes, yeah, I'm, I'm Bobby Duke. I was like, uh, uh, hello, hi. Uh, and he's like, yeah, he goes, he goes, I follow you. And I was like, yeah. And, and he, at that time, he had less followers than me. And really? it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, we had a conversation about it. He had less followers than me because he didn't really – he started doing bits and pieces on YouTube. but didn't really do much. And then I think one of his videos blew up massively. I think it was the Maui Hawk or something he did. Yeah. Um, and then that sort of took him to another level. But at that point in time in Atlanta, I had more followers than him. Uh, it was quite funny. So And then suddenly his channel just went – just skyrocketed. Yeah. So I met him there. I met Izzy Swan there. I met um, Jesse Ueda there. Uh, so many great makers. Um, and then I went to the New York Maker Fair. I went to another Maker Fair somewhere else. I did another woodworking show. I just came back and I thought, you know what? This this show is, these shows are great, but they're sort of lacking a few things. I'm lacking like I felt that like lacking a bit of the family aspect. You know, there and was we no didn't have any there. here, did we? No, not really. I mean, we had Baker Fair here, but that sort of closed down, didn't it, a few years yeah. ago? But um, so so I wanted to sort of create something that kind of combined all these shows, but maybe add a few more bits in. I wanted to show whether you could bring the family. You know, I took Charlie, my little boy, to to Atlanta. I, I think he was the only kid there. You know, right. and so I wanted to sort of try and introduce it to to the younger generation because I've always been quite a big fan of trying to get the younger generation into making stuff which is why I kind of more act the fool on my channel because it entertains the younger generation um whereas you know if it was just a general uh you know sort of woodworking channel you know and obviously those are great like yours you know but you're very extremely skilled at what you do you know so you have your audience you know but I, I wanted to try and pull in more of the, the younger generation to sort of watch me goof around and be stupid, but also at the end of it come out with something that was kind of cool looking so that they might think, Dad, Mum, I, I, like, I want, want to make one of those. And I've had so many comments of from families and mums and dads and things like that saying, 
that you know their son watches the channel and they love it or their little girl watches the channel and some little videos like babies like watching it and like some of them can't go to sleep wow. without watching me and stuff <laughs> which is really quite nice it's a really lovely thing to be able to feel and I love my audience you know and the people that watch me and stick with me they're, they're so supportive of what I do Out of the Woodwork is brought to you by Axminster Tools Nobody is more passionate or knowledgeable about woodworking than us. A market leader in mail order tools and the machinery industry. We offer a friendly and personal service to many thousands of woodworkers around the world. Whether you're a trade professional, a business owner, an education leader, an amateur DIYer, or a hobby enthusiast, we share your passion. To discover more from Axminster Tools, just visit www.axminstertools.com. Well, I'm I'm interested. So you you went to all these these shows in America. Was that to research what they were doing, getting inspiration? At that point, did you know you wanted to create no. your own? No, oh, no. So definitely you not. went there. I okay. just went there because I thought, well, what's the next thing to do? And I was talking to a few people online and stuff, you know, like comments and stuff. And they're like, oh, we're going to the, be the thing you show. You should be there. And I'm like in Atlanta. And I'm like I'm from the UK. And I think for the best part of about six years, people thought I was from New Zealand. And yeah. like, we're turning, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. but a few years anyway. Uh, and I was like, no, no, I'm from the UK. Um, but so I went over there just to sort of, because everyone was saying that these are the sort of things that the community does, you know. And obviously at that point, I knew nothing about the community, you know, like I knew nothing about telecoms when I jumped into it. So um, so I sort of just went just because it was quite cool and just was so inspired by it. And I just thought I could do this because being like a sort of entrepreneur, or if you call it that, that, I kind of wanted to create something that was different and that people would love, the community would love to come. So I sort of stuck some of my money in that, that I had um, from, from the telecoms business to, to build Make Central and put that on for everyone. Um, you know, so it was never really done and, and, and no one really sort of knows. I don't really, didn't really go out there and sort of say, you know, I'm not doing this for the for a business, you know, because no one really <laughs> ask that sort of question but it, it was never put on for a money thing you know and obviously pe people can't really understand that like what do you mean you did a business you didn't want to make any money from it well no because I already had a business that was quite successful and this was just a fun thing to do and it was just going to be a one-off um and then everyone just was so uh, like in awe of it and they loved it and they said no go on Nick put another one on and I was like oh yeah, but you know, yeah, you couldn't like do a teasing grand every time. <laughs> <laughs> You'd <laughs> you be know. teasing everyone with just one. Yeah. yeah, I know exactly. So, so I decided to put another one on, and that was equally, I think, as successful. I think there's seven thousand people there, about 200, 200 start, two hundred um, exhibitors, and we've had so much support from from so many people. It's been so overwhelming. I mean, I couldn't name them all, but I mean, you know, down to exhibitors like you know Axminster and and. All the big big names out there, you know, Triton Tools and Gorilla Glue and, you know, Record Power and there's so many people that have supported us in this show. So many companies that have just done demos and things for us for, for nothing. You know, they've come along and just do a demo, you know, or, or they've just, just been there to say, yep, we're coming. You know, I mean, we're going to have three stands, you know, like Axminster, you know, that they've always put on a, a really great spread. People love having Axminster there. You know, they love what they do there. They're not just there just selling their stuff. They're there showing people how to do stuff. And they're showing, you know, and helping people. And that's what this community, and that's what this show is, is about, is showing people yeah. doing the demos. You meet all the great people and all the great influencers, which is a bonus. The families can come. You know, we have the mums come up to us and say, Nick, Nick, I'll just let you know that normally I drop, the, I drop my husband off here at these types of shows and I go home with the kids. But not this one. I, I come in and I come in with him and we will go around with so much for me to do and the kids to do. We love it. Thanks very much. And yeah. so many messages about that, you know, so it's great, you know, for people and companies like this and support, you know, all these people come in from America and they just, they just come over. Do you know what I mean? And this is what the great thing about the show is, is that people just turn up, you know what I mean? And, and no one's, you know, ever really sort of like demanded us to say, well, we're not coming, you know, unless you give us like 10 grand. And I'm like, you know, people just know it's about the community, about getting to the community and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it's just been so overwhelming, you know. So anyone listening, I just want to say thanks to all of those people, all those makers, all of those companies that have been supporting this show. It's been absolutely amazing. And obviously, 
we 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 just got through the last two years coronavirus yeah because we should have done a 2020 show we should have done a 2021 show but we we didn't but we we survived so and that's been tough as well you know it's been tough trying to support things you know because you know money's not endless it doesn't come on trees and i've only got so much of it and i wanted to put that into putting another show on really um but unfortunately i had to put it into the you know to 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 sort of keeping us there really and and making sure that we could come out with the 2022 show did the nac um transfer the booking or did you have to do that twice or three times yeah no that i mean they 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 kept the money they would they don't refund any any cash they they had already been paid um and that hall's like 60 grand you know it's that's difficult yeah yeah yeah, so so they transferred the money to the next show i.e 2021 or 2022 you know, so when you've got people coming back, say, yeah, I've just given you like three grand, you know, I, I could have it back. I said, well, well NEC's got it. <laughs> I don't have it. So if I did, I would. And they're like, ah, no worries. Okay, if NEC's got it, we'll come 2022 then. You know, and we've still got a few of those now that are, are, are transferred to 2023 shows, so, which we haven't announced yet. We, we are working hard on that. But again, generally, you know, pretty much everyone was supportive. Makers were supportive of us, you know, um, and messing them around because of the corona we didn't mess around but obviously it's a case of like you know they were coming they had all scheduled for do demos and then suddenly oh no sorry we have to postpone the show you know and you always get the odd couple of people that were like what what do you mean and i'm like yeah but it's, we can't run the show <laughs> it's just not allowed oh my god i've booked my plane ticket you know i've booked this what am i gonna do i'm like well i'm sure everyone will be supportive of you as well and hopefully and, and i think a lot of airlines were supportive but some of them weren't which was a bit mean you know, yeah. some of them just said, look, you, you, you can't fly. Because if they could fly to the UK, they're not a problem. Just because the UK weren't allowed to put on any shows, that wasn't the airline's fault. So they were like, if you can't fly, it's tough. Yeah. So they were like, oh, great. So I won't be able to come then, Nick, because I've lost my money. You know, and there was a lot of that. that. It was it was it's awkward, very awkward, because you feel like you kind of almost want to go, here you go, you know, yeah. we'll get your ticket, here's your grand back. You know, but it, you can't because it's just so it's so many people. You give one person a refund, you've got to give, you know, <laughs> a thousand people yeah. refunds. Then suddenly you, yeah. you're you're getting bank loans to give people refunds. It's just you just can't do it. It's so it's an awkward position because you want to do the right thing, but you also got to do the right thing as well on the other side of the spectrum. So, you know, that's been tough, and that also takes a toll on things as well. You know, stress and everything else. But you know, we're we're getting through it, and we've waded through it. And the 2022 show was brilliant. I think it was really good. We had a bigger hall. I think it felt like it was a bit empty, but it wasn't. It was actually the same sort of size: seven thousand people, two hundred and twenty exhibitors. But it was um, it was a big hall because we wanted to social distance. I was and, gonna and say it's, that. Yeah, and NEC moved us into that hall. But it was twice the size. So it looked like we were rattling around in there. But but we weren't. And we did have a few people come out. It's a great show, Nick. But a little bit light this year, isn't it? Not many people there. I was like, no, actually, it's the same people. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just a thing. bigger room. It's just a massive <laughs> hall. And they're like, mm, yeah, okay, it just seems a bit light. Well, yeah, it does. Because you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's yeah. huge, this place. It's massive. We had to cordon off some areas because it was just so big. You know, you just yeah. have like big areas that we just couldn't fill. So, but we had to have this three meter gap. And once you sort of set that up and planned it all, even though they reduced the gap down to two meters, to, to move all that again and get the contractors to do it all and everything else, it was just, let's just leave it. Let's just leave it as it is, guys. Let's, let's not change it. Because no doubt, you know, they'll come back and go, we want it to be four meters now, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, we, we just basically stuck with it. But I think it was a great show. I think really, yeah, really awesome. good. You know, loads of people loved it. You know, and everyone put on a great performance, obviously, including, you know, uh, you guys did a massive, massive show again, which you really, really are grateful for, really supportive of the show. And I can't thank, you know, you and everyone else enough, really. It was it was amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, I it was what I think it was my busiest show. I had uh, you had lots couple, going on. Didn't you? Yeah, I had a couple of demonstrations with Axminster and then I was on the main stage with uh, Peter yeah. Brown, Bob. And that's what I mean. They all Alexandra. came. They all came yeah. over. Yeah, and that Q and A was really good. I do like, I, I like <laughs> those Q and As because you can like like you you could just talk for hours about what you yeah. do, you know, because you love it. And hopefully, the people in the audience got something from it and part of. I think some they wisdom. did. Yeah, I mean, they love. I mean, and they love what you do, Sean. You know, you, you're obviously an extremely talented, um, you know, person. And I've seen yeah. some of your woodwork, <laughs> and it's 
I mean, it's pretty crazy. I mean, it's just like another level of, of, of woodworking from, from me, you know, and, and I don't have that kind of skill or talent. And it's great to have it because, you know what I mean, the stuff that you make is awesome. And people like to watch you do that. So I think the demos oh. you were doing were, were so, you know, probably a few comments about people going, oh, this guy over there is making, you know, doing some really good stuff. You know what I mean? So I really that was, appreciate that. You. that. Thank I was you. Like, I know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank my you. Mate. I, I do think you're incredible as well, especially, I think you specialize more in wood turning than I do. I wouldn't class myself as a wood turner. Mm. Um, would you say you, you, I, I read that your uncle had a lathe. Do you, did you think yeah. you went down the wood turning route because of your uncle or well, yeah. why do you think you did that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean when, I, when I was younger, I used to go to London to see my uncle and he had a little workshop there and he used to do a lot of woodworking. He made, he made a few really nice chess boards and stuff and chess pieces and things. I've got one of them here, actually. I should have shown you, but it's upstairs. But um, and he used to do a bit of wood turning and stuff. And um, and he always used to take me to the workshop and he used to chuck me on the lathe and give me like a little round spindle thing and put it on there and go, go and have a little play with that. You know, and, and yeah, so I did a bit of things with him and that may have triggered something in my mind to be, yeah, because why did I get a, why did I get a lathe? I have no idea, really. I don't think I was really watching anyone sort of specific in that person that was a wood turner. I just sort of, it, I don't know, it was a really weird, I don't know why I really got the lathe. It, I know I was inspired by watching people on YouTube and things, but I don't really, can't pinpoint it down and go, yeah, it was, it was because I was watching, you know. Mike Walt or something, you know, just, I don't know who I was watching, but I was watching a lot of them. And I think just Lathe maybe just reminisced with me and thought, yeah, that's cool. I could do that. And I think it's sort of fairly straightforward in the sense that, you know, the thing's spinning around and you kind of got to put tool up to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, <wow. laughs> have you ever had any accidents? I've been actually fairly lucky, really. I've been, I'm a very cautious person in the sense that I make sure I'm very safety, you know, cautious and I've always got the right, you know, things. Although you've probably seen a few videos where you think, oh, you know, he's got his long sleeves on, but it's a smock, which is a proper wood turning, you know, jacket. But obviously I may not have done the up properly yeah. or something like that. But, you know, and, and I've got my ring on and stuff, but it's my granddad's ring. I leave it on. It's been on since I was god i don't know 10 you know i had to add it expanded a few times but you know it, I, I wouldn't take it off but I, i'm quite careful around it and stuff like that so and i tried not to you know i tried to be safety conscious for the audience as well so but i've been quite you know i haven't haven't had any any problems i've nicked a few like nails and stuff and you've got to be careful around that type of thing because yeah. it's spinning at some speed you know and obviously i learned I did get a few wood turning lessons actually from from jo John Davis. I don't know if you know John Davis wood turning. No. Um, really, really great guy. You know, really great wood turner. He used to have a little shop just around the corner from me, which was brilliant because that's where I got all my gear from, and I bought the lathe from him. You know, and he was very much a uh, record power um, kind of like guy. So that's kind of where I got my link from record power, and they supported me from because they knew I was on YouTube, so they they supported me as well, and they've you know given me all lots of tools. That, the lathe was from them and the bandsaw was from them and you know which was really quite quite great so um and i got some some few few lessons not a lot a few lessons from him of how to do wood turning properly um yeah. but and we're using traditional tools which i can use you know as well as but i do tend to find that using the carbide stuff is just quick and easy you know although you know you'll, you'll get your traditional wood turner will be like you know he's not doing it properly you should be using this and this which is fine you know and I, I know that you can and i know you you may end up with a better result or you know that's the way you should do it but the carbide stuff's come out and obviously the the professional wood turner doesn't necessarily like too much of the carbide stuff although i've heard some of them still use it i know carl jacobson uses the carbide stuff now because it's just quick and easy yeah. you know and i think if you're learning if you want to learn wood turning i think using carbide cutters like the, the three tools that you get um which i designed actually and got my own tools made don't make them anymore but i did have a, quite a few sets i sold them all um and i think it's if you're learning if you want to learn wood turning i think it's great it's a great thing to learn and i think i would start off with the carbide because it's just it's it's just so much easier to learn. You can you yeah. can make something really great from from the carbide stuff. I always still use the carbides. It's great for resin as well. 
Um, so yeah, I think I think it's I think it's quite straightforward in that sense, you know. But obviously, I've learned I learned as I go along, you know, how to do things. I've learned all myself really, and by watching people like yourself, you know, and 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 learning how to do things, um, yeah. making boxes. I've made boxes, made tables, made you know all sorts of different different things. <clears throat> but mainly, my stuff is as you know, wood turning. You know, the bowl, the average bowl, or the average uh, vase. Something yeah. like that I would t- tend to do. I so. do think a lathe is a very good first tool to get. A lot yeah. of people ask me that because, if first of all, if, if you don't know if you're going to like the craft or not, it, you only need one tool to make a full project. You know, you can't really make a whole project with just, let's say, a drill or a table saw. Or just no, yeah. you know. So if you've got a lathe, you can make a project just on that machine. And also, if you wanted to grow a workshop, you can sell those things and then mm-hmm. with the profit, then buy the next tool. But you couldn't sell something if you just bought a drill. Do you know what I mean? No, exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love the lathe, you know, but I've also got a lot of other tools in the, in the workshop. I've actually got one of Axminster's um, uh, saws in here, actually. It's a really big, powerful saw. It's a, it's a huge thing and it's fantastic. It really is good. You know, when I'm doing the bigger projects like the, um, the, the, the tables and stuff, um I, i'm always firing that up but you know if you don't if you don't use that properly then that, that will be fatal um so yeah. uh, so but i mean I, i'm very careful with it very conscious about it and um you know if used properly then it's a it's an absolutely amazing bit of kit so yeah i've got lots of things in here you know drill drill press and sanders and things and route r- r- to tables and stuff all sorts going on but well, i was always oh. always like the lathe it was good seeing your workshop. Uh, and that's another good thing about YouTube is you can, like you were saying, you still got your early videos up. You can mm. see how people, people's work changes, but also workshop, because you weren't always in that workshop. You're in no. uh, the shed to begin with, and now you're in a bigger workshop, and you, you yeah. got this specially built, didn't you, for for this yeah. workshop? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is just, it's just really a glorified shed, really. So I was in, I moved home about three, four, 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 three or four years ago. So I was in a, I was in a little tiny shed initially, which was only like about an, ten by eight or something like that. So tiny, but I mean it's you know s- small in that sense. And then I moved um, in the same house into another little uh, wooden shed that I had there built, which was a little bit longer, but still not that not that massive. A lot of my videos are from from that sh- from that shed workshop. And then when I moved home, I needed a, something a bit bigger. So then I built had this one built so it's like it's a shed it's just a wooden wooden shed really but i had a carpenter friend who kind of you know did a, a bit of a, a better job for me on it and and made a couple of different sections so i've got my little area where i just do my this area i try yeah. not to get too much dust up this way and then all the messy bits down there and stuff so but yes yeah, it's, it's a great little place to it's got everything in it that i need you know so um you know and uh, it's just yeah it's just it's pretty busy actually it's full up with all sorts of stuff <laughs> yeah but it's uh, but I, I love it in here yeah out of the woodwork is brought to you by axminster tools having spent the past 50 years working with makers and creators we understand the importance of providing the products you need the knowledge you trust and the committed service you deserve as a british retailer we're proud to support british design and quality we take particular pride in the manufacture of our growing range of own products at our state-of-the-art facility in Axminster. From concept and design through to production, everything is done in-house. For more on our own grown products, plus top quality tools from around the world, visit www.axminstertools.com. So you you do a lot of resin. You mentioned you you put some of the plants in, in resin before. Yeah, I've done some, yeah, I've done some flowers before. I have done some flowers work in resin before. Yeah. Was that a big step move because i haven't have i done resin i think i've used resin maybe to fill a crack in some wood but i haven't done it on your <laughs> scale was it a yeah. big step to move into resin or because i know a lot of people have issues with it yeah i mean it's you know it's, i mean it's there's lots of resin out there you know and and um i've just basically come across a really good brand which actually is is local to me which is the entropy brand and um and it's just it's good because also it's um bio based as well so they're doing their bit for the environment as well which i like as well i like that sort of stuff i try and do those types of things you know like plant trees and stuff like that do my kind of bit you know and i like the fact that it is 
you know, because the other one I was using, well, it was great. Um, it, it smelled really bad. It used to give me quite headaches and stuff, you know. It was like, oh, my God, it was like potent. This one doesn't smell at all, uh, which is really nice. I like about it. Um, and and um, it just it just comes out really well. So uh, I like using the resin, and I think that I think I've saw I've seen lots of other people, in, you know, um, I think who got me into resin. I think it was Heath Knuckles, to be honest, got me into doing resin because as I was – doing my youtube channel mainly using wood and then i was following these other people and i think i i I remember following heath quite a lot and watching his some of his amazing creations and and obviously he uses resin all the time um and his creations are just you know amazing what he comes up with how he how he can get his resin to look that way Uh, and then i got sort of talking to him and stuff and, and he sort of helped me a little bit about how to do things with with resin and stuff that you know he's a really lovely great guy uh, Heath is um and um sort of got in it from there really because uh, you can start creating loads more different things and and then I sort of start adding resin to the projects and stuff which is quite cool and, and now I've just gone just absolutely it's just stupid now I'm just sort of like putting in ketchup and and like grass and you know all sorts of weird weird stuff I don't know why uh, I just sort of does no the idea. food in resin last I was wondering. Yeah, that. yeah. I mean, I did the McDonald's project the other day, which is all right. It was a bit of fun. I was, I'm sort of in between projects, and I kind of was conscious of the fact that I hadn't put a project out for a while because it's been quite tough trying to get projects up all the time. It's it's not easy doing them. I used to do them every week. Um, yeah. But now I'm sort of every sort of like couple of couple every month now. So I was sort of conscious of the fact that I haven't put one up yet. So I thought I'd quickly do an experiment with, with McDonald's. So I put, put McDonald's burger chips, uh, uh, fries, and, and, and nuggets in resin. But I put lots of things in resin. You know, some people, uh, you know, put like dead animals, not dead animals, but I mean like insects and things. You know, they, they, they did. I did a dragonfly once, um, which I found in my shed. I just got himself caught up and just passed I was away say, it was dead it. already i hope <laughs> of course it was resin. of course it was yeah let's, let's put you in resin mate <laughs> yeah no he, he was passed away long, long gone but um i wanted to try and preserve him which was the, the kind of the next best thing to try and do with with him because he came with lots of really lovely colors um so i wanted to sort of keep him in there and sort of see if i can preserve preserve his body but um it didn't work out because there was too much moisture in in him still so he hadn't been dead long i don't think so uh, okay. <laughs> so it's sort of it, it, the moisture came out of him whilst the resin was setting and it cracked all the resin uh, so that video is out there yeah so many complications with resin there is there is yeah. yeah i mean you can get lots of complications you know people swear by pressure pots like me or or um uh the other one the thingy chamber where it's you've got one that sucks out and one that blows in or i don't know but um, i used to, i used the pressure pot which basically puts pressure in which is supposed to push all the bubbles out which i tend to find fine but obviously on the bigger projects like the tables and stuff that i did i did the big table the other day um which, which which was using material um which turned out quite well but you can't always stick that in a pressure pot so you just have to you know be careful with that one you know you've got to use a slow resin so it takes time to to get all the bubbles out and then you have to sort of keep coming back to it to make sure that, you know, there's no bubbles. And I used a little heat gun just to yeah. get the bubbles out. I mean, there's a lot that people don't see because, you know, why would you? You only want to do a, a, you know, a 10 to 20 minute video. And obviously these projects take days and days, yeah. you know, so yeah. you don't want to, you can't. I don't do those types of projects that you'd see in detail to learn how to make a table from me you know you just watch it just for the creation really almost like a five minute craft but mine's more like a 15 minute craft type thing really and yeah. like oh well, that's cool you know but um i don't ever tend to teach because i'm not a teacher i'm not a professional you know i i probably do lots of things you know wrong but you know i'm learning every day as i go along as well you know so and i think people respect that as well the people that know me on the channel other people that join they're like you didn't do that right that was stupid what did you yeah. do that? But then also I act up a little bit on the channel as well to make it a bit more funny. You know, like put a plastic pot on a heat pad, you know. That didn't work. <laughs> Not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> so you're uploading once every other uh, week now, every other week. Yes, pretty is much that, every other week, yeah. 
Is that because uh, Maker Central has taken up most of your time? So, so I've sort of like been a bit sort of lax on doing the YouTube stuff. Um, I'm trying to get a bit of support for Maker Central at the moment. And uh, once we get that, uh, hopefully we can then put on another show and then I can concentrate a bit more on uh, on my new venture, which I've just sort of started to do, which is the, the new Makers Central app, which um, I know that um, you are on as well, which is yeah. really cool to see you in there. And, and Axminster are on the Makers Central app as well, which is really great. And that's what I, I want to focus on that now, because that's my that's kind of my baby. And that's um, another way of giving back to the community and trying to help people get into making stuff. And we've been developing this app for about three years. Uh, so it's been a long, long time um, to develop it because, you know, one you know, one thing, it, it costs a lot of money. It's not something that we can just get done just like that. You know, we have to bit here, stop, bit there, put it on hold, bit here. But it's out now and there's lots of people on it. I mean, there's, there's, um, there's about 3,000 people on there at the moment and it's sort of growing. It's slow, you know, like any type of app, really. It's not a fast thing to do you people have got to believe in it trust in it they've got to get on it and put stuff on it so it's great to see axminster on there you know and it's great to see people like you on there and jimmy's on there and bobby duke's on there and um jacko's on there and there's so many people on there and so what i like is also the news feed is just you can see what everyone's making and there's project yeah. plans on it which i haven't seen other people do before which is a really mm -hmm. good idea yeah it is um although there is a slight change to that um, because we, we, what we want to try to do is to try to create a platform that you're right, kind of like Instagram, but also gives back a bit more than what Instagram are offering for lots of people, but also the maker community is obviously our concern. So creating a feed to show others what other people are doing, you know, and, and having a snap feature, what we call it, is putting a post up or a little video to show people, which is kind of like Instagram. So you've got to think to yourself in that sense, it's good, but why people are going to put stuff on there when they can just stick that on Instagram anyway, where there's thousands and hundreds of thousands of people on there, which we get. So we made this project side of things so that people could start putting their projects on there. But we thought, actually, when we launched it, I don't think it's really being used in the way that we foreseed it to be used as because we sort of had it had a sort of an idea, but it's not really working in that sense so we're going to change that section of it and it's in development now should be out in a couple of months and this that section is going to be changed to how to so we're going to be able to get people or hopefully get people just like you i mean you'd be a perfect candidate to be able to put a couple of things up there like you know to actually explain to someone how to do this like i don't know how to sharpen your tools you would be able to put step one put a little description you can put a voice note in there you can put links to where you could potentially get those materials that you might be you might need to sharpen your tools um and those links could be affiliate links so that helps the maker in that sense helps them earn yeah. extra money um which is really quite great step two step three step four five six they could be videos or pictures and then it would be people will be searching the app for how to make a table how to make a cake you know, this is for the bakers as well, not just the makers, yeah. you know, so um, how to make anything. And we think that this could potentially be so much bigger, but you also have the snap element. So if you don't want to put up a how to, because obviously putting up a how to is a bit more detailed, you know, it's going to take a bit more time. We understand that, you know, so those makers have got to put a little bit more effort in than they would do with Instagram rather than just going bad, bad, post, bang, it's done. There you go. That's what I'm making. Check it out. You know, so it's a bit more detailed. So you've got to want to do it. But I think there's so many people out there that want to show what they do. And also so many people out there that want to know what, how to do it. So <laughs> before we go, can you, um, have you got any future plans, maybe any projects coming mm. up or it could be about Maker Central, anything we can look forward to? Yeah, I mean, we, I think we definitely want to put on another Maker Central show. I say, I'm, I'm always 90% sure that we will be announcing that very, very soon. So hopefully you'll be there, Sean, and hopefully Axminster will be as well um so so that's 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 coming soon um i'm desperately trying to get projects going um i made one last night i've got here but it'll probably be up by the time you see it but the guys at shadow foam sent me down some of their foam 
and, and I've been sort of playing around with it. The first project didn't work because I filled this whole thing with with yeah. resin, and it, it didn't go into it because it's there's a name for it. But basically, is there's two different foams. There's one that nothing gets in it, and there's one that doesn't. I don't know what the name is, but it's not absorbing. It didn't go in, it's something like that. Yeah, it didn't it didn't yeah. absorb into there. Um, so I ended up pouring all this resin in and it was just basically just going around it. So when I chopped <laughs> into it, there's nothing in there. So I still managed to make something from it because I like to try to make something from it. Um, and, and I, a lot of my projects are sort of failures, but also into, I make something of it. So I think people like that and they respect the fact that they see something that, um, doesn't quite work. And I think they like the fact that I show that because, there's been times where I thought, I'm not going to put this on YouTube because who's going to yeah. want to see this? Didn't work. But I thought, no, I'm going to do it because I think it's important that people get to see that it's not all rosy. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's not all perfect and stuff. You know, things happen in the workshop and it's tough sometimes. So you just got to work around it. But the good thing is I worked around it, came up with another solution and made something from it. You know, so it wasn't a waste. So they sent me down anyway, digressed again, as always. They sent me down. <laughs> Loads of chopped up foam, like loads of little bits and pieces. So basically, I come up with with this. Oh so my this god! Is... So it's a shame people on listen to the I, podcast won't be able yeah. to see this, but on YouTube, you've got to check oh, yeah. this out. Yeah. So so this is the next project um, that's coming out. So this is basically just mashed mashed oh up foam, um, little bits. So obviously, the foam is has managed to adhere better in yeah. this. Um, but I mean the 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 colours in this you can't it's not doing it justice but the colours in this are I it is exactly it does insane. look really good mm. yeah. yeah so it's so it's really pretty cool um, and that's the last one I just finished this last night well Nick it's been an amazing chat thank you so much and that's all right no thanks for asking me you know it's great to have you know um, you guys want to talk to me about stuff i don't tend to give away you know much about my personal life and stuff never really have done so um you know and and, um it's just just been nice to 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 chat to you you know and and obviously it's been yeah it's been really great you know really interesting and i think a lot of people have learned a lot more about you and and where you've come from and how you got to where you are now yeah and yeah i'm looking forward to seeing you at the next maker central yeah definitely yeah you're going to be there of course of course, yeah. of course. Get yourself on that Axminster stand. Start making some stuff, showing people yeah. how to do stuff. <laughs> but in the meantime, you'll probably be putting some stuff on the app, right? Yes. Definitely. <laughs> of definitely. course you will. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, no, and um, yeah, uh, fantastic. It's been really great. So thanks very much for, for all of you to, um, to invite me in. So it's been amazing. Thank you. And thanks for your support again. Join us again next time for another episode of Out of the Woodwork. For more episodes, to listen and subscribe, Search for Out of the Woodwork on all major podcast sites, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And for more woodworking project guides, demos, tools, reviews, and more, visit www.axminstertools.com.